Boswell Media Sports. And welcome in, Whippet fans, to game number three of the 4A State Softball Championships from the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. I'm Breck Riley here, and it's winner take all. Winner or loser? Winner takes all, loser goes home, and so does everybody else. But we have uh, an exciting ball game in store for you uh, today between Kosciuszko, Lady Whippets, and the North Pike Lady Jaguars. Uh, Whippets lost game one, came back with a strong performance yesterday in game two, and got the win to force a game three. Just one of two uh, game threes uh, here on the weekend. There will be another game after us as Hernando and Oak Grove in the 6A championship series. Uh, Oak Grove won last night to force a game three, and those are the only two game threes in the uh, entire softball state championships as uh, all the 1A, 2A, and 3A all swept, and as did um, Neshoba Central in the 5A swept their championship series. But here... We are talking about the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. You're listening to the Wendy's pregame show. And uh, yesterday we caught up with head coach Tony Terry after the Whippets ball game against uh, North Pike when they got the big win. And so we'll go ahead and air that interview right now. And then we'll go to another break. When we come back, we'll continue on the Wendy's pregame. But, yeah, we do have Kosciuszko Lady Whippets softball here. We start our interview with Coach Tony Terry and uh, see what he has to say about the big win yesterday. All right. Well, Coach, what would you tell the team after that uh, loss in game one yesterday? Uh, to be honest with you, I tell them the same thing. I told them after the West Lauderdale loss that, uh, you know, even after watching the game, I thought we was going to win the ball game. Uh, and they believed that. They was actually telling me that before I told them. I mean, that's the thing with the whole uh, team this year, you know. Uh, the belief, belief in yourself is going to take you a long way, uh, especially in a three-game series. So, uh, talk about the, the the play of Mary Kimball Price, your pitcher today. Didn't didn't walk anybody and had some some good defense. So, what can you say about the way she played? Man, she uh, she pitched her tail off. I mean, it was uh, you know an uh, early game. It's really hot out here, and uh, you know uh, just competed. And that's that's what she's done every time she's got on the field. And I expect no less. Uh, what do you look for out of uh, Game Three between your squad and North Pike? Uh, well, I look for us to compete like we did today. Uh, you know, a lot went right for us today, but there was also a lot of things that went wrong for us today, and we battled through them, I thought. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a game three where we've seen every one of their pitchers, and they're going to you know, be a game where they've seen every one of our pitchers. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, we're going to try to, you know, do some things uh, that we always do and, and that work for us and compete and, and, and just try to put the ball in play like we did off of them today because, you know, having seen all three of them, uh, you know, that's a big plus. That was head coach Tony Terry as we caught up with him yesterday after the ball game. Obviously today, you know, I could, could, not, not able to get out there and get much from them. You know, coaches are kind of, uh, you know, uh, stoic before the game. Uh, but we do appreciate Coach Tony Terry yesterday after the big win for making time for us. Uh, you're listening to the Wendy's pregame show here on uh, Breezy 101 and Boswell Media Sports. We'll step aside for a, another break. We come back, we'll give you the starting lineups. You're listening to Whippet Softball from Boswell Media Sports. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. For 70 years, Ivy Mechanical has been a leader in mechanical construction and commercial heating, air, and plumbing service. We owe our longevity to our leaders, employees, and our customers. Now, with over 800 employees in 11 locations across the Southeast, Ivy Mechanical takes pride that we are headquartered right here in Kosciuszko. And we want to wish the Kosciuszko Lady Whippet softball team all the best at the state championship. Ivy Mechanical, for 70 years, we've been the people you can rely on. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's Breakfast. A tomorrow that says bacon, not bacant. 
where fresh eggs reign like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Harry there, if you're not only... To wish Catherine Claire Schuler, Campbell Blaine, and all the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets good luck as they play for the state championship. Whether you're heading out to a game, on your morning commute, or just need a little something to quench your thirst, stop by the sip on Veterans Memorial Drive in Kosciuszko. Try out our great selection of coffee or grab a fresh fruit smoothie or frappe. We also have great food items for breakfast and lunch. The Sip and Kosciuszko. Go Whippets! Hey, I'm Ryder Davis with Farm Bureau. As a young insurance agent, it hasn't taken me long to understand the value of life insurance. Even at an early age, life is unpredictable and it is important that your life is properly insured. With age and good health, there is never a better time to get life insurance than when you're young. Whether you're married or living on your own, someone you love is responsible for you. Life is not guaranteed, but our life insurance is. Call me, text me, or come see me today at Farm Bureau on the Square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Well, welcome back into the Wendy's pregame show. Just a few minutes away from softball here from the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. We will get to your starting lineups that are brought to you by Angel Abbott McDonald State Forum. We have a change in the starting lineup. I mean, we're getting two or three people coming in last minute, uh, making sure we get the change in our book here as a uh, last-second game-time decision. But we'll start it off with your Kosciuszko Lady Whippets batting first, playing second base, Kelly Hood. Batting second, playing center field, Campbell Blaine. Mary Kimball Price bats third. She's the designated player. Catherine Claire Schuler bats fourth, plays first base, McKinley Dickerson. Bats fifth, plays shortstop, Gracie Williams. Bats sixth, plays third base. Here's where the change comes in. We had Macy Coleman penciled in to start in left field and bat seventh, but it looks like they're – Lizzie Kate Jones, who went down with an injury in that first game, she's going to get the game time decision and try to go here in the ball game. So she will bat seventh and play right field. Emma Rush will bat eighth and be behind the plate. And Alexandra West will play left field and bat ninth. Emma Gail Kelly, the flex, will be in the circle for the Lady Whippets. So it's Hood, Blaine, Price, Schuler, Dickerson, Williams, Jones, Rush, and West. And for the... North Pike Lady Jaguars, very similar lineup, but they did move a couple of players around. Top of the order stays the same. Catcher Emily Williams bats first. Kalea Wagner, she bats second. She'll play shortstop. Meredith Bates, yesterday's starting pitcher, is back at third base. She bats third. Alea Crossley, the left fielder, bats fourth. Avery Payton in the circle for the North Pike Lady Jaguars today. Sydney Williams, who has been the designated player all weekend, actually gets into the field. She will play right field today. Jolie Spears bats seventh, plays center field. Natalie Deer, who had been playing first base or third base, depending on who was pitching, uh, she's the designated player today. Uh, Laney Greer will bat ninth and play second base. And Elena Houston, I have not called her name this weekend. She gets in as the flex player. She'll play first base, but will not be in the batting lineup. So it goes Williams, Wagner, Bates, Crossley, Payton, Williams, Spears, Deer, and Greer. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Angel Albert McDonald State Farm. Yesterday, it was uh, backs against the wall for Kosciuszko Lady Whippets, and they came out with a 13-7 win. They got huge innings in the fourth and the seventh. They put four across in the fourth, anchored by a two-run home run from Mary Kimball Price, and then a grand slam from Catherine Claire Schuler in the seventh inning of the game really opened it up. And the Lady Jaguars tried to mount a comeback. It was 13 to three, or 13 to four, going into the bottom of the seventh. And uh, the Lady Jaguars put something together, got a home run of their own, but they were not able to complete the comeback. So that's why we have this game three today. So pitchers will be a. a mirror image or a co carbon copy of what we did in game one. Emigel Kelly for Kosciuszko, Avery Payton for Coach Sonia Wallace and the North Pike Lady Jaguars. Kosciuszko 
is the home team today. So they will be in the third base dugout, and the North Pike Lady Jags will be in the first base dugout. And that's chosen on a coin flip. You know, in this year, the North team was the home team for game one. The visiting team was the home team for game two. And then after that, you just do a coin flip. And apparently, Coach Tony Terry and the Whippets won the coin flip and chose to be the home team today. The Lady Whippets going with the black tops and the maroon bottoms. The maroon numerals, maroon Kosciuszko written across the chest. And the Lady Jags going with the navy blue tops, white pants, and sort of that Carolina blue um, numerals with North Pike written in it, Carolina blue, across the chest. So that's what the, the fashion report is. And looks like we might be on time for our a little bit of an early start. They have taken the meeting of the officials and coaches at home plate, and both coaches have gone back to their prospective dugouts, and both teams are lined up ready to hear the starting lineups, but maybe they're going to start actually at, on time today. The past few days, we've gotten a, a, about a seven, eight-minute early start, and yesterday we got about a five-minute early start. And uh, so maybe they're giving us a little bit more more time today as game time was bumped up. We kept moving them forward. I said if there was a game four, we'd be playing here at 8 o'clock in the morning. But we are, we're good to go here right now as the starting lineups are just about to be announced. Uh, settle in. Or if you're listening on, the, um, on Breezy 101 or on the Breezy 101 app or maybe on the YouTube live Audio only stream. We're not allowed to video stream the ball games, but we do have the YouTube audio only link up there at breezynews.com and on the Boswell Media YouTube channel. So if you can find that, you can tune in and uh, sit back and enjoy the game. There are a lot of maroon and white fans have made the trip here. It's almost full over on the third base side. And I would probably dare say today that the maroon or white do outnumber the uh, Blue and white from North Pike. North Pike has a, another baseball playoff game just up the road this afternoon at Summerall. They split that series. They lost game one, won game two last night, so they have game three. So I imagine a number of these fans are going to be taking the short trip, you know, right up the road from Hattiesburg to, to support the baseball team as even more maroon and white fans uh, begin to file, continue to file into the stadium. I was talking to some of the TV crew. Uh, over here to my left, and they were really impressed, as I said, about how many people made it down from from Kosciuszko and a number of people here that are haven't been here all week. You know, it's a Saturday game here, so a lot of people got up on Saturday and able to come down, maybe not able to make it on Thursday and Friday. So uh, maybe that's why the Lady Whippets uh, went to uh, went to a game three. They wanted to have a good a good day, a good travel day for the uh, for the for the fans. That was the. Uh, Starting lineups continue to be called out. Not a cloud in the sky. And a slight breeze blowing out to left field. So we will have a step aside in a minute for a moment of silence. Uh, they don't do a prayer here. They do do a moment of silence and then a national anthem. So that's what we will have to step out for. Oh, Miguel Kelly going to take her spot in the circle and we'll get ready for that. So we're going to step aside for our anthem break. We're back after this here on Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. 
Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank with locations in Lexington, Goodman, Vaden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties, Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. That puts a wrap on the Wendy's pregame show. And uh, Miguel Kelly steps into the circle to take a couple of practice pitches. She'll get the start today for Coach Tony Terry. She got the start in game one. And the only other game three that the Whippets had to play was against West Lauderdale, and she got the start in that one as well. And Avery Payton will be her counterpart for North Pike. But it is game three, winner take all for the 4A state championship, and we couldn't have a, a better day for it. Lady Whippets doing some warm-ups here, and first up for the... Lady Jags will be Emily Williams. Emily Williams is the catcher for Coach Sonia Wallace. Something to note here about Hattiesburg, the Kosciuszko Whippet football team going to be here later today just across the street at the uh, Rock. That's what they call the stadium, the football stadium on the uh, campus of uh, Southern Miss. They'll be playing in a uh, spring football jamboree. I talked to Coach Moore before the game, and he said, yeah, he's just going to walk across this. Well, I guess they're not going to walk because it is a little, little bit. you got to go across the interstate. You don't want to do that. So he's going to go over there. But, yeah, well, the Whippet football team going to have some folks in town uh, this afternoon. And Emily Williams will step in as we get ready, maybe just a little bit after 11 o'clock. Well, here is your first pitch. It's high for ball one. First pitch is at 11.01. The first pitch is brought to you by Holmes Community College. Williams yesterday 0 for 4. She, second pitch high for ball two. She didn't reach on an error, and uh, she came around to score on that home run from Meredith Bates. So that's what she did yesterday. In game one, she was one for three. That's a little low line drive that's caught by Kelly Hood at second base for the first out. Yeah, a little low line drive that Hood had to move to her left a little bit and basket catch it there. One down in the inning. Kalia Wagner steps in. Wagner was 0 for 4 yesterday. She had a big game in game one, though. Pitch called strike one. They're just underway here. The first inning. First innings for Whippet Softball brought to you by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. That one's just off the plate. Just a little bit outside. The fastball stayed off the plate yesterday. Or off the plate. And uh, yesterday our umpires weren't too great about giving that outside corner call. See what they're going to look like today. That one's hit into right field, and it'll go down as a base hit. Oh, a single for Wagner. It's a good piece of hitting. It fell in front of Jones. I don't think she would have been able to get it either way, even if she got a great jump on it. It was hit low and very hard. So Bates steps in. Bates had the big home run in the first game, in the first inning yesterday. Let's see how Coach Tony Terry Wants to pitch to her. Well, that time Kelly goes right after her and blows a fastball that Bates can't come up with. So swinging strike one. 
Yeah, Kelly just opened her up with that heater. There's another one that's called a strike. Boy, this umpire has a very slow, even slower than the umpire yesterday. So we can't, it might take us a while to figure out how the strikeouts go. That's a slow little dribbler to Schuler. She'll grab it herself and step on the bag at first. Or out number two. Moves the runner over to second, but yeah, no chance of a, a double play. Schuler's only play was at first base, and Alea Crossley steps to the plate. Crossley was three for four yesterday. One just a little bit outside for ball one. Top of the first inning, two outs for Kosciuszko. That's a little blooper hit in the shallow center field. They're gonna send the runner home. Here comes the throw, not in time, and that scores a run. It'll be a single and an RBI. Crossley able to reach second on the throw, but Wagner comes around to score, and the Lady Jags draw first blood as they have in every game so far this weekend. Avery Payton steps in and the change up is called a strike on the inside corner. Payton two for four in yesterday's game. Came around to score a run. That fastball stays high in the zone for ball one. One one count. Stays high outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Oh, a little bit of a breeze blowing out to left field. One's low for ball three. Good job by Rush behind the plate to scoop that one up. Otherwise, Crossley may have been able to take third base. 3-1 oh, delivery is called strike two. Count goes full. So a payoff pitch in the pitcher versus pitcher matchup. It's on the way. That's high for ball four. With two runners on. Sydney Williams steps in as Hood and Schuler come in and talk to Kelly. Words of encouragement. Williams is playing right field today. She had been the designated player in the first two games. But after some fielding issues in right field, Coach Wallace is going to get her to play a defense. Two for four yesterday with a pair of singles. Low ball one. Runners on first and second. They're in the top of the first inning. North Pike's already put one across. One stays high for ball two. Emma Rush will walk out and speak to Miguel Kelly, and we're going to have a courtesy runner. Yeah, there was a Toller is going to come in to run for Payton at first. It's odd. They did it after two pitches rather than doing it right away. Maybe I don't know if they forgot or uh, or what. But they got her in. And there's the 2-0. That goes inside. For ball three. Three balls, no strikes to count to Williams. That one's high, ball four. With two straight walks, loads the bases. And it 
dangerous Jolie Spears is coming in to the plate. I'll draw a visit to the mound from Coach Tony Terry. Let's have two out in the inning. I got the first batter to pop out. And Wagner hit a single, and then Bates hit a ground out to first base. After that, it was a single that drove in a run and two straight walks. Oh, Coach Tony Terry wants to walk out, speak to his team, and maybe go over some procedure here. You, the, luck, the only good thing about it is that with the bases loaded, you got the force play at every bag. So if you get a slow roller, you can you know, kind of step on the bag or toss it to the the person closest to you. But you got to guard it up right here if you are coach, or I should say with the whip it defense. And it's a, a dangerous player coming in, Jolie Spears. Three for four in the game yesterday with a home run and two doubles. He's a center fielder for North Pike. As Kelly finds the strike zone there. We'll strike one to Spears. That one's hit high in the air, and Campbell Blaine drifting to her right. We'll haul it in for the final out. So after all of that, there was only one run on two hits, no errors, and three left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first, North Pike. They one to nothing lead. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm, because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald, State Farm agent. For the service you deserve at the price you want, call us at 662-289-3161. I'm here, and I'm ready to help on Highway 12. Call us, 662-289-3161, for your surprisingly great rate today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants are subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's Breakfast. A tomorrow that says they can, not they can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Boswell Media Sports. North Pike with an early one to nothing lead here in this game three the 4A state championship series and push one run across the plate in the top of the first. Lady Wibbits will get their turn to answer. They'll send Kelly Hood, Campbell Blaine, and Mary Kimball Price up to the plate. First innings for Wibbits softball are brought to you by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kelly Hood steps in. Senior. One for four in the game yesterday with a triple and a two runs scored. She did walk one time. And pitch called strike one. Avery Payton back in the circle for Coach Wallace. She picked up the win in game one. That pitch is high for ball one. Payton came in for about one inning yesterday after the Lady Jags pulled out the starting pitcher, Meredith Bates, put in Natalie Deer. Deer only went two-thirds of an inning. After that, Payton came in, worked one inning, and she gave up three runs on three hits. That time, Hood looks at a called strike two on the outside corner. The first time Hood faced Peyton in game one. There's a swinging strike three. Well, we got her to chase one there, did Peyton. I'll bring up Campbell Blaine. The hood was three for four against Peyton in game one. At that time, couldn't figure out the fastball in the dirt. Campbell Blaine steps in. Campbell Blaine's at-bats presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. One's just off the plate for ball one. Yesterday, 
Blaine went one for three. She had a triple, scored three runs, and drove in a run. Lefty-lefty oh, matchup. Swing, foul ball off to the third base side. That one won the count. One to nothing. In the bottom of the first. Another foul ball off to the third base side. The count goes to one ball and two strikes. He wants a, the umpire wants a new ball. I'm not sure he doesn't like that one for some reason. He'll roll it to the Whippet dugout. So a new, new ball comes into Payton in the circle. As Campbell Blaine has a 1-2 count. Outside ball two. Got a lot of good production from the top of the Whippet lineup yesterday. It was the opposite of what happened for North Pike. Blaine fouls that one off. North Pike's top three in the order went one for 12 yesterday. Kosciuszko's went three for 11 with the home run, two triples, six runs scored, and seven runs driven in. So that was the production from the top three. There's an off-speed pitch for a called strike two, I mean strike three, and that'll be two down now. And Schuler stepping in. No, excuse me, Price. Price had the big home run in the fifth inning. Yesterday, they gave the Whippets a four to two lead. It was tied, and she broke that tie, and the Whippets never looked back. Stoppage of play here. Price called time. One for four yesterday was Price. She reached a couple of times on some walks and some errors. Pitch stays high, ball one. And I think that's a, that's a dangerous one two punch to try to pitch to. And you got Price and Schuler back to back. That one stays high as well for ball two. Two outs in the inning, both strikeouts. That's a pop-up. Running out to try to make the catch is Wagner, and she does. She hauls it off in shallow center field for the out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. After one complete, the Lady Jags lead it one to nothing. Classroom to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. It's the top of the second inning with Kosciuszko trailing at one to nothing over North Pike here on game number three, the 4A state championship. Hey, I got an answer yesterday. You know, we were asking about the flagpoles or two flagpoles in center field, the tall flagpole with nothing on it, and then a short flagpole with the uh, American flag. Well, I did find out that the rope broke on the tall flagpole, and since it's rained so much, they hadn't been able to get a lift out there and get it fixed. So they put up the little small flagpole so that they would have uh, a flagpole here at the stadium. <laughs> so I talked to one of the groundskeepers here. So mystery solved for all of you that, you know, were 
losing sleep last night if you listened to the game yesterday trying to figure out why there was two uh two flagpoles here in center field uh, we're set for the second inning as eight nine and one will come up for north pike first pitch to deer is called strike on the outside corner deer today the designated player yesterday she played third just off the plate for ball one. And in the game on Thursday, she played first. So she's been going all around. I believe it she gets moved around because of the, the pitching situation. That one's hit to Williams. She takes it off a high hop and fires it across with a 5-3 put out. That'll bring up Laney Greer, the second baseman. But yeah, Deer, depending on who's in the circle, I think if, if Bates is pitching, then Deer plays third base and Payton plays first. If Payton's pitching, Deer plays first, Bates plays third. But today, she's designated player. Laney Greer, she's been at second base all week, though. First pitch is an off-speed pitch that stays high and outside. Yesterday's ball game... Greer was 0 for 2. She struck out and popped out, but she did reach base on a hit-by pitch. She looks at strike one on that one. You go back to the top of the order after this. Kelly and her wind up. Pop up. Foul territory. Going to get out of play. Looked like it might stay in, and Hood and Schuler gave it a good r rundown over at first base, but it got out, landed on top of the first base dugout. And Kelly ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes. Swinging strike three. And it's the first strike out of the ball game for Miguel Kelly, the second out. Top of the order for the lady. They say that Rush dropped the third strike. Well, they're going to say that Rush dropped the third strike, but Rush, she didn't act like it. And Rush normally would have thrown it down right away. But strikeouts presented by Talent County Farm Bureau. They're going to say she's safe. You would think the catcher would know whether or not she dropped the ball. Well, it goes down as a strikeout, but Greer stands at first base. The dugout told her to run to first, and Coach Tony Terry's not happy about it. I don't blame him. And Rush pops up like she's going to throw down to first. No throw. The ball pitch was low, and Williams squared around to bunt. Still, Whippet fans not happy about that call. Oh. 1 0 pitch. All right down the middle for a strike. Yep. Still a little flabbergasted about that. About that call. What? Anyway, Whippet's got to put it behind him. And coach wants to talk to the umpire. I'm not sure what about. The pitch is, was a strike, so I'm not sure what he may be wanting to speak about. But coach is talking to the home plate umpire. Coach Terry is. Yeah, not really sure what that was about. But coach walks back to the dugout. Yeah, I don't know what that might have been about right there. Unless, yeah, I'm not real sure. Anyway, count is one and one to Emily Williams. 
Wolf Pike with a runner on first, one out in the top of the second. That time. Williams squares around to Bunt again. It holds up. And Rush pops up and fakes the snap throw down to first. Count will be two balls and one strike. Hit into center field, and Campbell Blaine makes the catch for out number two. And pretty much a line drive right to her. Didn't have to move very much at all. And Kaylee Wagner comes to the plate. She scored the only run today in the ball game. She singled and came around on a single from Alea Crossley. It's funny, the, the field here looks fantastic at the ballpark here at the Southern Miss Softball Complex, except for one small bald spot in the um, center field. And that's a line drive. Base hit robbed by Kelly Hood, who jumps up in the air and pulls it down for out number three. So the drop third strike doesn't hurt anyone. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. Go to the bottom of the second with North Pike leading Kosciuszko one to nothing. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank. With locations in Lexington, Goodman, Vaden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. It'll be the bottom of the third inning. Four, five, and six will come to the plate for the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. It'll be Catherine Claire Schuler to lead things off. Schuler, the big grand slam in the game yesterday. Really kind of put it out of reach. That time she gets popped up as Wagner steps about three steps into the outfield grass at shortstop and pulls down the catch for out number one. Now McKinley Dickerson steps to the plate. Two for five yesterday was Dickerson with a couple of singles and a run scored. A sacrifice bunt as well. North Pike with a one to nothing lead. Uh, Payton starts it off with a changeup that Dickerson's way out in front of for strike one. That one's outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. And the bottom of the second inning, second inning for women's softball, presented by the Itala County Co-op. Owens hit on the right side. Greer plays it off her left and makes the throw to first in time to get Dickerson. 4-3 put out. And uh, Gracie Williams steps in. It was Williams that had the first hit of the ball game yesterday after the previous five batters had been retired. Maybe she can try to get something going for the team today. Ball. I'll tell you, it's hard when you can't hear the umpire because we're up here in the booth with headphones on. You can't hear him, and he really does have a very late signal, but that was a ball. Well, here's pitch number two to Williams, and she grounds it to Wagner. Charges, fires, throws, 
in time on the 6-3 put out. Whippets go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. After two, complete. North Pike one, Kosciuszko nothing. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or Healthy You appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. Top of the third inning. Three, four, and five will come to the plate for the North Pike Lady Jaguars. Still a one to nothing game. Be Meredith Bates to lead things off here from the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi Softball Complex, which isn't on campus. It is just off campus, across Highway 49. You go out here and you get on the, the road, and it's about one block off of Highway 49, and the campus is right there. First pitch to Bates is not in the strike zone, ball one. Bates' only other at-bat was in the first inning, and she grounded out to Schuler at first. There she swings way under that one. Maybe like a golf swing there from Bates. Well, kind of leaving up at a ball and strike. Third innings for Whippet Softball presented by Premier Medical Group. That one's hit to Williams and bounces over her glove. And Bates stands in at second with a double. And I'll probably go down as a hit because that was a hot shot and uh, it really hit right off the top of Williams' glove. So that's going to be a double for Bates. Yeah, that one's just a hard one to play for Williams. Uh, still no official ruling from the scorer, but we were scored it as a double. Off-speed pitches on the ball. Ball one. Alea Crossley, a single today, drove in the game's only run. That one bounces low, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Crossley, probably been the best hitter on the weekend for the team. Williams fields that one, looks the runner back and throws across for the out. Good job there by Gracie Williams putting that bad hop behind her and playing that one. And getting the out. And Avery Payton steps in, the right-handed batter. Left-handed pitcher, but right-handed batter. That's not unheard of. That pitch high gets away from Rush, and Bates will head over to third base. Oh. Now, a ball hit in the air in the outfield probably scores a run with that pass ball. Out of the zone for ball two. One to nothing. Top of the third. North Pike in the lead. That one's hit in the right center field. 
Campbell Blaine going to track it down, but it will indeed get the run home. Great job there by Blaine. That was a long, long run to get to it. She's playing more over in left center. That ball was hit in right center, and she did a great job to get that one. I wasn't sure she was going to make it just because of how hard the ball was hit, but it does bring in the run, two to nothing. Your score here in the top of the third. First pitch to Sydney Williams is called strike. Williams also walked her only other bat at bat today. Swinging strike two. No balls, two strikes to count to Williams. Pitch number three, it's hit through the gap at shortstop. Four base hit. Two out base hit for Williams and Jolie Spears steps up to the plate. Spears hit a long one out to center field. It was caught by Campbell Blaine and that's what ended the first inning. Two outs, Whip is trying to find a way to get out of the inning. Change up, called strike one. Still impressed with that, that pitch there from Kelly. More often than not, it gets called a strike or swung on and missed. Hit hard, but foul. Third base side, about halfway down the bag, between the bag and the foul pole, but just foul. So another 0-2 count to a North Pike batter. The 0-2 pitch. Another foul ball. This time it's off to the right side of the field over the first base dugout. I see a school bus pull in outfield. I think that's going to be Oak Grove coming in. Pitch is high out of the zone. And a snap throw down the first from Rush. It wasn't in time, but it was, it was close. One ball, two strikes to count. But, yeah, Oak Grove and Hernando playing a game three right after us. You're the only other game three in the softball state championships. Pitch must have been just a little high. Looked good from here, but it's ball two. The Hernando Ball Club has already filed into the stadium here earlier. It must be Oak Grove coming in. They both have the same colors. <laughs> Hard to tell. That ball gets past Dickerson into the gap at shortstop. They are going to send Williams home. And Spears stands on second with a double. Williams comes all the way around to score. That'll make it three to nothing. Yeah, just a good good piece of hitting. Dickerson did her best to get to it and dive and at least stop it. But it was just out of her reach. So designated player Natalie Deer steps in. With a runner on second base. Deer today 0 for 1. Grounded out previously in the ball game. Three to nothing. North Pike jumping out early. That pitch is called a ball. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going, next strike that's called, I'll tell you how long it takes for the uh, umpire to call the pitch. That one's hit just foul over the bag at third. It looked like Williams might be able to jump up and snag it, but it was uh, about yay three inches over the top of her glove. No count, go one ball, one strike. Oh. Runner on 
on second base. There's a little slow ground ball that's foul at third base. Oh, two strikes to Natalie Deer. One ball in the count. Here's the pitch. And that's a called strike three. Oh, well, in the inning, strikeouts brought to you by Form Bureau, but the Lady Jags get Two runs on three hits, no errors. One left on base. Go to the bottom of the third inning. Kosciuszko trails it by three. Can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm? Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Boswell Media Sports. In the top half of the inning, the Lady Jaguars increase their lead by two. Seven, eight, and nine do up for Kosciuszko in their half of the inning and try to get things going. Whippets have yet to have a base runner. They've been sit down in order by the pitcher Avery Payton. And third innings for Whippet Softball are brought to you by Premier Medical Group. So Macy Coleman is going to step in and bat. We had Lizzie Kate Jones in that spot. Maybe something changed that we don't know about. But that just called a strike. Well, maybe, maybe Jones is playing right field and Coleman is gonna bat. That pitch gets way away from Payton. It's high over the glove of Williams. Uh, so Coleman got the start yesterday. She was one for four with a single and a run driven in. That one foul. A couple of people in the stands have to duck. That one came right over just outside the where the net ends. Some people standing on a ledge over there laughing right now. But <laughs> kind of split them. So they're lucky they didn't take one off of the teeth. Count is one ball, two strikes to Coleman. One bounces low in the dirt outside for ball two. It'll be Coleman, Rush, then West. Some whippets desperately need a base runner, uh, error, something. Outside ball three. The first three ball count of the ball game for Payton. He's been very solid so far. A payoff pitch coming to Coleman. It's hit right back up the middle, and Payton catches it out of the air. She throws the first anyway, but I believe she caught that one. She had to go to the ground, turned her glove over. She threw the first just in case, but I believe she caught it out of the air, so it technically goes down as a fly out. And Emma Rush steps in. Rush, the number eight batter in the lineup, was one for three yesterday. Strike one called. Let's see, Rush had a single, drew a walk, scored a run, and drove in a run. Here's the 0 1. 
It's hit back up the middle. Wagner plays it off her glove. It'll roll into center field. It'll probably be an E6. If I had to guess, but it's the first whip at base runner. It would have been a hard play to make because Wagner was moving to her left and having to make the play close behind the bag. So even if she stops it, I'm not sure she's going to be able to throw out Rush. Still no signal yet from the official scorer. Well, they will rule that an E6. Oh. Alexandra West steps to the plate. West, the right-hander, two for four yesterday with a pair of singles. She swings, but comes up empty on that one. No ball, one strike to count. If you're just now tuning in, it's three to nothing. The North Pike Lady Jags lead it in the bottom of the third. They got one in the top of the first and two in the top half of this inning. That's a slow ball hit to shortstop, and Wagner can't play that one. That'll be another error. They weren't going to get two. because The second baseman, Greer, not even covering the bag, and Rush was going to beat out the throw anyway. But they could have. Wagner could have gotten West at first. It looked like a routinely easy enough play, but... Back-to-back -back errors from Wagner, and the Whippets have runners on first and second. Only one out, and the top of the order coming up in Kelly Hood. Well, that's been the story for the Lady Jags here in the series. They, they don't walk. Neither team really walks that many batters, but the Jags uh, have had trouble fielding, and you know, there were some issues in the field. Whippets didn't walk anybody yesterday. And in the ball game yesterday, let's see, how many walks did they have? Six walks yesterday issued by North Pike, and then I believe all but one of those walks came around to score. So, North Pike, very good at hitting the ball, solid pitching, but defense, maybe the Achilles heel is... Kelly Hood steps to the plate. She's 0 for 1 today with a strikeout. And that's a strike. Okay, I keep saying I'm going to tell you when the umpire actually gives the strike signal. If I can get one. I'll give you the pitch, when the pitch happens, and when the strike is called. 0-1 count to Hood. That one's hit to Wagner short. They're going to go to third for the one, and they'll get the lead runner. That time, Wagner played it well. That's a fielder's choice. And same exact spot. Runners on first and second with a batter coming to the plate. Campbell Blaine. Two outs in the inning now. It was a close play at third, but... It was hard enough hit that Wagner was able to throw it in in time to get the play ahead of Rush. Pitch off the plate for ball one to Blaine. Campbell Blaine's at bats presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. Blaine was a victim of a strikeout, a called controversial called third strike in the first. The 1 0 pitch, it's outside for ball two. 2 0, the count to Blaine. Alexandra West is at second base. Blaine represents the tying run. That one's low in the dirt, ball three. Blaine had to pick up her foot. That one was coming at her. Okay, we might have the best opportunity here to, so I could give you the, the, the timing for when he calls the strike. Because at 3-0, you might think a strike is coming from Payton. So here we go. Pitch on the way. Now he calls a strike. <laughs> That's how long of a time frame it is. 
gives a late, late signal. Oh, interesting. Interesting to see how um, umpires do things differently. But a 3-1 count now to Campbell Blaine. It's hit to Wagner, and she's not going to be able to get anybody. Great piece of running there by West. And Bates fell down. Like Bates was going to go for it and then decided to come back to, sh to third and maybe take the play, but she fell down. So when Wagner was going to try to go to third, she couldn't, and Blaine gets the infield single. They are loaded for Mary Kimball Price. Price her only other at bat was in the first inning, and she a fly ball pop up on the infield to Wagner at short. It's hit into center field. Spears going back, and she'll track it down at the warning track. So it's a long out, but it's still an out. Whippets don't get anything. No runs on just one hit, two errors, and three. Left on base after three complete. The Lady Jaguars lead it three to nothing. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. People say things change, but in Mississippi, good things don't change. They change everything. Back when a blues musician picked up a guitar and struck a chord with the world, the Citizens Bank was making life better in Mississippi communities. Now we're in every corner of the state, changing banking to be more in yours with accessible lenders, more product choices, and always the latest in digital banking. After over a century, Changing to local sounds better and better. Member FDIC. Boswell Media Sports. Whippets can't capitalize on the bases loaded and two outs. They go down, leaving all three runners stranded, and they still trail it three to nothing as we get set for play in the top of the fourth inning with North Pike ahead. It'll be number nine in the order. Lane Greer stepping in for North Pike. She's a right-hander. Struck out in her previous at-bat on the afternoon. And Miguel Kelly still in the circle for Coach Tony Terry. Pitch low for ball one. Fourth innings for Whippet Softball are brought to you by Serve Pro. Chili taking her time here, getting some signals from Rush. That one is called a strike. Hey, that time we could hear the strike call, so the umpire is vocalizing his calls. I don't know if it was uh, maybe just a little uh, more quiet than usual, but we did hear his called strike there. So maybe he just needs to yell it a little bit more so we can hear it. Swinging strike two. It looked like that breaking pitch there from... Kelly. Well, she's quickly ahead in the count. We'll go back to the top of the order after this batter, Emily Williams, the catcher, standing in the on deck circle. Foul ball. Off to the netting on the right side. Even more people coming into the ball. Park, sort of a, a grandstand here at the University of Southern Mississippi softball complex. Called strike three on the outside corner. Good looking pitch there from Miguel Kelly. He'll be the first out and strikeouts are presented by the Tyler County Farm Bureau. Oh, top of the order, Emily Williams, the catcher. 0 for 2 in the ball game with a couple of pop-ups. Pop up to Kelly Hood to start the ball game, and then a deep fly ball caught by Campbell Blaine. 
low. Ball one. Okay, I think I've got the umpire figured out. If he calls a ball, he looks off to the side. And if he calls a strike, he stays looking forward and then gives the signal. So I think maybe maybe in the final, in the third, the fourth inning, we've got his calls figured out. Yep, that time he stayed looking forward and then called a strike. I see your game, sir. It's like a chess match here between me and the umpire. Anyway, one ball, one strike to count to uh, Emily Williams. Kelly winds and delivers. It's a foul ball. It goes down the third baseline. Almost into the whip at dugout. Yeah, the slide breeze is picking up. Here are some chants coming from, I believe, from the first base dugout on the North Pike. Chanting. Whip it dugout. Not, not, not doing too much right now. There's the changeup. That stays just off the plate for ball two. If it, it didn't miss by much. Kelly probably wants Williams to chase after that one, but with her being the leadoff batter, showing uh, good patience. That one's hit to Williams, who dives and stops it, ups and throws in time for the out. Great stop, diving stop by Gracie Williams and a quick throw because she got Emily Williams speeding down the baseline. So great play there by Williams to record the second out. Mm -hmm. Haley Wagner steps in. She singled and scored today and was robbed of another base hit by Kelly Hood to end the second inning. She hit a line drive and Hood ran and jumped up to bring it down. That one's chopped to third base. It's, they're going to say it's foul. Williams grabbed it and made the play right along the bag at third base. As Coach Wallace comes down to, to the plate to speak to her batter, Wagner. The ball's one strike to count. Whippets trying to get to the bottom half of the inning. They have two outs. And they need base runners is what they need when they get to their half of the inning. They only have one hit in the game so far, just Kosciuszko. But now Coach Wallace has finished up her talk with Wagner. And Emma Rush takes her spot back behind home plate. As Kelly's into her delivery. It's hit back up the middle and past the diving Dickerson. That'll be a two-out base hit. Yep. That one's just to the left of the bag at second. So, once again, not much that Dickerson could do. She was playing a little more in the, in the hole at short. So, when she has to go, try to dive for those balls or go for those balls in the middle of the field, she has to dive and I'm not always able to get to them. Well, it's a two-out single. Meredith Bates is due up. She had a double in the third inning. Came around to score. And runner's going to try to take second, and she is out by a mile. Great throw, great tag, and that'll do it for the – Jaguars here in the top of the fourth. No runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. After three and a half, the Jaguars lead it three to nothing. Service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald, State Farm agent, for the service you deserve at the price you want. Call us at 662 662- 289-3161. I'm here and I'm ready to help on Highway 12. Call us 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants are subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's breakfast. A tomorrow that says bacon, not bacant. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity. 
honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the fourth inning, Kosciuszko desperately needing some runs. A trail at three to nothing. Four, five, and six come to the plate. Schuler, Dickerson, and Gracie Williams. Game number three, the 4A state championship. Whippet football going to be playing on the field just across the highway from us. Spring football jamboree. Also know that North Pike, these young ladies want to get out of here quickly because prom tonight for North Pike. So I imagine they're going to scoot out, win or lose. First pitch to Schuler rolls to the plate for ball one. Schuler popped it up on the infield. Her last at bat to lead off the second inning. No. One ball, no strikes the count. Fouled back behind home plate. Yeah, we were talking to some of the uh, radio crew for North Pike, my, my pal Benji, and he was saying that the softball team plays today. You know, they got prom tonight, but the the big one is the baseball team. They play at 3 o'clock in Summerall. That one's hit through the gap at second base. They're going to send Schuler to second. And she's in there standing up with a leadoff double. And she does a little Hulk Hogan flex out at second base. Yeah, that was just hard hit ball. Greer had a chance for it, but moving to her right, not able to get her glove down in front of it. And it rolled all the way to the fence. And McKinley Dickerson steps in. That's the first time that the Lady Whippets have gotten the leadoff runner on base today. It's very, very important. We're going to have a pinch runner and a Grace Mansell come in to run at second base. So Mansell going to run for Schuler at second. And Dickerson steps in. Work against Payton. Dickerson grounded out to second. Back in the third inning, a second inning. And they get one at first, and they throw in time to get the double play over at third. The ball was hit back to Payton, who went to first. So it will be the 1-3-5 double play. So that negates the leadoff double. That wasn't hit hard enough that Mansell probably couldn't have gotten to third. I mean, it was it was a close play, but Payton did her job of looking the runner back and throwing to first, and then a good job by Houston to throw it back up the middle. And, well, you hate that right there because there's a hit from Williams right up the middle that might have scored a run if you still had someone on base. I don't know it was a slow roller in the center field. I'm not sure they would have got anybody home. A two-out single will bring Lizzie Kate Jones to the plate. Jones did not bat the first go-around. First go-around, it was Macy Coleman that batted in that spot. So this will be Jones' first at-bat here on the afternoon. Did not play in the game yesterday. Went down in right field with a, a leg and uh, ankle injury in the game one. That pitch was way high. Williams has to jump up and... Grab it. She throws down to first in time. I mean, not in time. Williams back in time. Ball one to Jones. Yeah, Jones was trying to dive for a ball in right field in game one, and like she might have uh, rolled her ankle. She had to be helped off the field, but she's back here today. She was given the day of rest yesterday. As that pitch is off the plate for ball two. 
but she's not showing any signs of favoring that ankle. So maybe the day of rest was what she needed. And there's ball three. That one stays up high in the zone as well. Three balls, no strikes to Jones. Go back to game one. Jones got in two at bats, I believe. She didn't, she reached base on a fielder's choice. Not a called strike one. Jones thought it was ball four, as did many of the Whippet fans. She was about ready to throw her bat down, and it was a close pitch. It was inside, but umpire apparently thought that it caught the corner. That one is off the plate for ball four, and that's a two-out walk. Williams goes to second. Jones at first. And Emma Rush will be at the plate. Rush reached on an error in the third inning. She hit a ball, a uh, little like a tailor-made ground ball up the middle that Wagner couldn't play at shortstop. Strike one. Called on the outside corner. It was back-to-back -back errors for Wagner there uh, in the bottom of the third when Rush and West both got on base. That one's low outside, ball one. Snap throw from Williams down to second is not in time. As Gracie Williams is back in plenty of time. Three to nothing. North Pike with the lead in the bottom of the fourth. There are two outs in the inning. We'll be trying to put out a, put together a two-out rally. That's the ball. Yes, ball. <laughs> two balls, one strike. That time the umpire didn't do his little his head movement. He can't be changing it up on me now. Two and one to rush. That one comes in high inside. Rush has to lean out of the way. It's about eye level with the face mask. Three one. Here's the pitch to Rush. That one's called strike. Oh, we got a full count with two outs. All both runners going to be in motion on the play here on the pitch. You got Rush at the plate. Alexander West on deck. That one's hit into the outfield. They're going to send Williams home. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. And uh, Emma Rush with a two-out base hit drives in a run. Oh, good job of hitting there from Rush. Good job of running from Williams. Jones able to advance to third base, and Alexandra West comes in. West reached on an error in the third inning. He said it was a back-to-back -back errors from Kayla Wagner. Oh, Whippets get on the board there. Doing it with the two-out base hit from Emma Rush. Just down the line at first base. Williams did a good job of cutting it off. Otherwise, Jones might have been able to score. There's a first pitch change up that's not in the zone. Ball one. Coach Tony Terry doing some coaching, talking to his base runner at third base, Lizzie K. Jones. And it's seen like that they want to move Emma Rush over to second. That's hit into center field. Should be an easy play for Spears. It is. She comes in and makes the catch. But, hey, Whippets do get one run on three hits. There were no errors and two left on base. Whippets get one of them back. They trail it three to one. We head to the top of the fifth. Classroom to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, 
affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Fifth inning of play. North Pike with a two-run lead in the champ what is the championship game you know championship series is the best two out of three but then when you go to a game three in effect this is the championship game well Kaziesko trying to hang on here they are the home team in today's contest Meredith Bates leads things off in this inning the number three hitter will be three four and five to come to the plate. Miguel Kelly in the circle. Set the defensive lineman for you. It's Williams at third, Dickerson at shortstop, Hood at second, Schuler at first. You got West in left field, Blaine in center field, and Jones in right field. Rush behind the plate. And then Miguel Kelly winds and throws. First pitch swinging foul by Bates. Kelly threw all but one out in that game one loss. She was uh, taken out in the fifth inning, I believe. Schuler came in and got one out. After that, Kelly came back in and pitched the sixth and the seventh inning. Mary Kimball Price went the distance yesterday. There's another foul ball for strike two. And the only other game three the Whippets have had to play in the postseason was that game three against West Lauderdale. In that one, Kelly went five and a third, and then Price took it the rest of the way home. Let me see something similar today. 0-2 pitch. High in the air. Blaine giving chase, and it's off the base of the wall. Bates has another leadoff double. You know, that one might have gotten caught up in the wind as I didn't think off the bat that it was going to be that far out. I knew it was going to be a hard play for Blaine to make, but it hit yeah, right about the lower third of the wall, and she did a good job to corral it and keep it from bouncing back to where Bates could advance to third, but that's the second time that Bates has let off an inning with a double. As Alea Crossley, the left fielder, comes to the plate. Lady Whippets expecting bunt. Pitches out of the zone, ball one. Yeah, you got Schuler and Williams both cheating in here. But Crossley has been the best hitter on the weekend for Coach Wallace. I'm not sure they're going to take the bunt out of her hand. They show it right there. She squares around to bunt. Pitches. Pitches outside for ball two. But yeah, Crossley yesterday was three for four with two singles and a double. That time she hits it into left field. It's going back and it's off the wall. And Bates will come in to score. And Crossley stands at second with a double. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back pitches that have been hit off the wall. That one I thought might have gotten out of here. But it was off the top of the wall, and it bounced and rolled back in, and Crossley not able to advance, as that's going to do it for Kelly. And Price will come in. So 4-1. to one is the score as we're going to have a pitching change. We'll take a break. We come back, we'll reset it for you. North Pike 4, Kosciuszko 1, pitching change timeout. The neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm. Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I 
at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Boswell Media Sports. Mary Kimball Price, the eighth grader, on to pitch for the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. Emma Gill Kelly goes four innings, gives up four runs on eight hits, and strikes out three batters. And the runner at second will be her responsibility. No outs in the inning. And coming to the plate will be the pitcher, Avery Payton. 0 for 1 today. She walked in the first. Sacrifice fly, drove in a run in the third. But Price ready to go. First pitch is off the mark for ball one. Now this part of the lineup, I'm not 100% sure that Coach Wallace wants to bunt any of these players. They've, they, this, they've shown that they can, they got some deep bats. That one's hit to Williams at third and she fakes the throw to second and she'll dive in. We'll say she's safe at second. I believe she tagged her. I thought she tagged her when she went back. But Williams faked the throw to first and then ran the runner down and dove right at the bag. It looked to me like a tag was made. So we'll have a pinch runner, courtesy runner. 10, Tristan Toller comes in. It'll be runners on first and second. I guess they score that a fielder's choice. But it's not an out, because they don't give it a hit. Oh, Sydney Williams, the right fielder, digs in at the plate. Pitch is called a ball. So runners on first and second. There's still nobody out. Four to one, North Pike with the lead. The ball's hit foul. It'll land on top of the press box back here. Right on top of us. 1-1 one, one the count. Fifth innings for Whippet Softball, presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. Another foul ball. That one goes down third base and rolls into the corner in left field. One ball, two strikes. The count. Let's see the scoreboard is one and one. And it should be one and two. I think we have a, a grad student from the University of Southern Miss here working the scoreboard. Talk to him a little bit before the game. There's another ball is hit foul. Out of play. One of the sports information directors for Southern Miss is here at the ballpark. He is the official scorer. He is down there next to the PA and the scoreboard operator. The pitch is high and gets away from Rush. Count will even up at two balls and two strikes as the runners are able to advance. Crossley ends up at third and Payton, or Toller, who represents Payton, is at second. Still nobody out. 2-2 two, two pitch. That one's way outside, and it'll get past Rush, and Crossley is able to come on the wild pitch, and Payton moves over to third. Well, that'll make it 5-1. to one. That one a little, little outside, and the count goes full to Williams today. One for one with a run scored. 
reach base both of her at bats as she was walked in the first inning. Two runs already across here in the fifth. Swinging strike three. And Price comes in and gets the strikeout. Strikeouts presented by Helen County Farm Bureau. One out now is Spears. Jolie Spears, the center fielder. We're, there is a Josie Spears on the roster as well. We've only seen her one time. I think come in to pinch run, courtesy run maybe. We've seen the other Spears at, at some point. Pop up on the infield. And calling it off was Price. And she comes down and makes the catch in front of the plate for out number two. So Natalie Deer steps in. But yeah, that ball's hit about a mile high. Rush and Price both going for it. And, and of course, Price has the, has the call there. She's the one running forwards towards it. So two outs now. And Natalie Deer, 0 for 2 today. That's a pitch inside for ball one. Deer struck out back on the third. There's some whipping fans who thought that one should have been strike one. It wasn't a, wasn't a bad out of the zone if it was. Well, close, close one there on the inside corner. Here's the. 1-0 pitch. It's a pop-up in foul territory. Williams makes the catch in front of the whip at dugout, and that will do it. All things considered, the Whippets do uh, dodge a bit of a bullet there as the Lady Jazz get two runs on two hits. There were two errors and one left on base. After four and a, five and a half, no, four and a half, North Pike leads it five to one. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or Healthy You appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. Lady Whippets have four runs to make up somehow. They trail it five to one in the bottom of the fifth. An important thing to note that you don't have to get them all at once, but you do have to get them before the end of the ball game if you want to bring home the 4A state championship. And uh, maybe the best opportunity they have is right now because top of the order is up and Kelly Hood looks at ball one, bounce a little off the plate. Hood's 0 for 2 today. She did reach on a fielder's choice in the third inning. They had runners on first and second, and she grounded to short, and the shortstop went to third to get the lead runners. That's ball two. Kelly Hood, one of four seniors playing in their final game for Kosciuszko, four seniors that have been playing for a long, long time. They're not playing their final game of their careers, though, because they're going to be moving on to play in college as Hood leads it off with a double hit to left, a right center field, and she stands at second. She might could have gotten to third base there. The ball got hung up out in the outfield. The leadoff double and 
course, Kelly Hood is always a threat to try to steal a base. As Campbell Blaine comes to the plate, her at-bats are presented by the SIP. Blaine singled in the third inning. She does have a hit today. Right there, she comes up empty. Infield single for Blaine back in the third. The lefty-lefty matchup we've seen a few times this weekend. Pitch runs way off the plate for ball one. Williams had to reach way out to get that one, which luckily enough she did for North Pike with Kelly Hood at second. On any hesitation, she would be standing at third base. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. It's hit to in the infield, and it's going to take a weird bounce, and Wagner can't play it. It'll probably go down as an infield single. Ball just died. Wagner was never going to be able to, to catch it. It was She's playing deep in the gap at shortstop, and she was going to play it off the hop and throw it to first, and when it hit the ground, it died. It did not bounce up at all. So an infield single, and Mary Kimball Price steps in. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. Strike one. Called. Outside corner. Price showing some patience there. Last time she was at the plate, swung at the first pitch, which we've seen in the playoffs she's not afraid to do. She hit it deep, but it was tracked down. This ball won as it stayed up a little high in the zone. The bottom of the fifth. Whoopits trail it by four. Fifth innings presented by Michelle Nicholson, State Farm. That one's hit in the right field. Williams going back. She'll make the catch. The runners are going to tag up. And they're going to try to send Hood home. Here comes the throw. It's in time. But... Blaine will be safe at third. Oh, two outs. The ball got away at third base, and Crossley was playing behind home plate or behind third. And Blaine, they they sent Hood home, but the great play by Crossley, and uh, the catcher Williams is shaking up a little bit. Blaine stands at third because she came on around. I think there's some discussion here as to what's going on, but I'm not sure what they're going to call. They're going to say that Hood didn't slide, but she couldn't slide because Williams was up the line. So there's going to be two outs. As there was an out in right field. It was caught. Uh, fly out to the right field, and then Hood's thrown out trying to get home. And there's a still being talked about at home plate. And I said, I'm not sure what they wanted Hood to do there as Williams was up the line. So, yeah, there's two outs. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that was. Unless they're saying that, well, really not sure. But they're two down in the inning, and Schuler steps in, runner at third. But after all that, there'll be two outs, and Schuler, who had a double her last at bat. Pitch is cold, strike one. Well, two outs. Game changes that quickly. So Whippets had runners on first and second with nobody out. Now they have a runner on third with two outs. Pitch high, ball one. Now Schuler hit a, a double into right center field, rolled all the way to the wall. That was to 
lead off the fourth inning. Of course, she had the big grand slam in the game yesterday. Pitch stays outside for ball two. Like Whippets need a, a run here in the worst way, not just mathematically, but because of some momentum. Don't want to come up empty-handed after you get your first two runners on base. As Payton takes her time. Now she toes the rubber. That one's hit back up the middle. Wagner plays it behind the bag at second and throws in time to get the out on the 6-3 put out. Whippets don't get anything. No runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. After five complete, Kosciuszko still trails it five to one. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point and Strut and Cotton t-shirts and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank with locations in Lexington, Goodman, Vaden, West, and now Itala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Itala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Itala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Itala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties. Itala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the sixth inning, Kosciuszko still trails it by four. It's five to one, North Pike. Number nine to lead things off for Coach Sonia Wallace. That'll be Laney Greer, the second baseman. I should say number nine. Number 31, number nine in the batting order. No, we're going to have a pinch hitter. That's Tristan Toller. It's going to come in to pinch hit. She is only, she's usually been used as a pinch runner for the pitcher. I believe she has come in one time in game one, and she grounded out. That's the only at bat I have her with back in the seventh inning of game one. So usually just been used as the courtesy runner. First pitch swinging strike one. But Greer had struck out twice in the game, so maybe... Uh, Coach Wallace just wanting to get a different body in there. Maybe someone's seeing it a little bit better. So Toller gets the call. And it's the top of the order up after this. In the sixth inning, sixth inning for Whippets Softball, presented by Central Tire Service. Low inside, ball one. It's Mary Kimball Price working, who came in in relief of Emma Gale Kelly back in the Top half of the fifth inning. She's got a 1-1 count to Tristan Toller. It's fouled back here in front of us. There's some action in the bullpen down to my left, but it's not from any of our teams. It's a warming up. I think that's Oak Grove down there warming up in the Bullpen. They'll play in the 6A championship game uh, probably about 45 minutes after the conclusion of this one. It's just a little low and inside for ball two. Whippet fans wanted to strike three. Umpire's been fairly consistent today. Not, you know, not many, um, not many calls to argue about. There's been a couple, you know, one or two, which are not going to have any, not going to please everybody. That's a swing and strike three. First out in the inning. First, second strikeout of the ball game for Mary Kimball Price. Strikeouts brought to you by Tallahassee County Farm Bureau. Nope. That'll bring up the top of the order. Emily Williams, the catcher. 0 for 3 today. 
Couple of pop fly outs and a ground out. But you really need to hold serve, so to speak, here as they're playing defense. Pop up, foul. Lands on top of the press box. Over towards my pal Josh West, who's doing the video internet video stream broadcast. Was able to eat supper with Josh last night. He lives here in Petal. Whippet fans will know Josh West as the voice of the Holmes Community College Bulldogs. Left field, West going back and will track it down for out number two. West played that one pretty well. It's hit hard off the bat, but West got a good look at it and uh, didn't have to try to play catch up. Played it well as Kayla Wagner steps in. Wagner today, two for three. She's been very good this weekend at the plate for the Lady Jacks. She turns on that one. It's hit deep into left field and it's gone. Solo home run shot for Wagner and that one went over the little diamond club set up out there. Uh, she'll touch them all. That'll add one run to the score. Two out home run. Yeah, they got the little left field lounge out there, if you will. And most home runs have been, you know, landing in the lounge. That one went way over. That'll make it six to one. Top of the sixth inning, and Meredith Bates steps in. Bates a dangerous hitter as well. Two for three today with a couple of doubles and a couple of runs scored. Foul ball hit hard down there towards Oak Grove, who's warming up. People trying to warn the girls down there warming up. As hard as that one was hit, hopefully no one was in the way of it. Change up, call it a ball. Yeah, everybody seems to be okay down there in that warm-up area for Oak Grove. But yeah, that was a scary moment as many of the girls with their backs turned to the field. That's a little pop-up. Dickerson will move to her right and make the catch behind third base for the final out. But the Jags get one run on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. To the bottom of the sixth inning, North Pike leads it 6-1. to one. Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. You bought lumber and you're ready to start digging post holes for that new fence, but not so fast. Do you know where your underground utilities are located? Central Electric Power Association urges you to call 811 for a free marking of underground electric lines and other utilities. Making the call before you dig can prevent a serious or fatal injury, plus it's the law in Mississippi. And please work safely around power lines. Central Electric Power Association, serving you since 1937. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Six to one, bottom of the sixth inning. Kosciuszko finding, got to find a way to make up some of these runs. And it will be McKinley Dickerson up first to try to get the rally going. Five, six, and seven in the lineup. So it's Dickerson and Williams, and then after that, flip a coin. In that seventh spot today, Coleman's batted, and Jones has batted. Can't quite see yet who's grabbed the bat to start taking any warm-up swings in the on-deck circle. Dickerson swings at the first pitch and fouls it off of her foot. She's 0 for 2. 
hit into a double play back in the fourth inning. It was a little pop-up or a little roller back to the pitcher. There was a runner on second base, and the runner tried to take third. And after Payton threw it to first base, Houston threw it across to third, and they doubled off the runner. And that one rolls to the plate for ball two. Dickerson, an eighth grader, already starting. So one of those Whippet fans, one of those names Whippet fans will be hearing for a long time. That ball's hit in the right field, and diving catch by Williams robs Dickerson of a base hit. Well, sometimes you, the ball's fall your way, and sometimes they don't. Right now, ball's falling uh, towards the blue and white, not the maroon and white. Well, Williams comes on and dives to make that catch, sliding to her left. Bringing it in. One down. As Gracie Williams steps up, she's singled and scored the only whip it run on the afternoon. First pitch to her is high, ball one. A 1 0 the count. It looks like Coleman's going to be coming to the plate. That's a ground ball that's hit to. Greer at second. Well, that'll be two down in the inning. 4-3 on the put out. So Coleman will grab a bat. Today she's 0 for 1. She lined out to the pitcher. And then when we got to the seventh spot in the fourth inning, it was Jones that batted. And Jones drew a walk and made it all the way to third base. You see Coleman, it's a pop-up, and it looks like Houston calls off Greer and hauls in the catch. There's a collision at first, but Houston hangs on to it. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We're going to go to the final inning of play, and North Pike with a 6-1 to one lead. We'll be back after this here on Boswell Media Sports. Get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates at State Farm because I'm here. Angel Alvin McDonald, State Farm agent, for the service you deserve at the price you want. Call us at 662-289-3161. I'm here and I'm ready to help on Highway 12. Call us 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rate today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants are subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's breakfast. A tomorrow that says bay can, not bay can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the seventh inning, the Lady Jaguars with a five run lead, six to one. The Whippets trying to hold serve here and get it to the bottom of the inning to try to make a comeback. It's the dangerous Alea Crossley stepping in. She's been on fire. Today and yesterday. Today she's two for three, a double and a single. She scored a run and driven in a run. First pitch from Price to Crossley is out of the zone. Ball one. Seventh innings for Whippet Softball presented by Atala County Bank. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Comes inside. Crossley has to dive, scoop back out of the way for ball two. 2-0 the count to Crossley. Avery Payton, the pitcher, is on deck. Now, whether or not they choose to let her hit is a different story. That ball's slowly hit back to 
Price in the air, and she fields it herself, and one down. Little scoop hit off the ground and went right up in the air, and Price fields her position, and there's one down in the inning, and Avery Payton stepping in. She will bat. Payton 0 4 2 today. Reached on a fielder's choice. She did have a sack fly RBI. Pitch low and inside ball one. Payton was the first batter that Price pitched to when she came into the ball game. That ball's hit into foul territory, and no one's going to get to it. It's on the first base line. Schuler and Coleman and Hood, all three giving chase, and don't, I don't think there was going to be any way anyone's going to get to it. It wasn't hit high enough for someone to make the catch, but there's a defensive note for you that Macy Coleman is in playing right field. Oh, 1-1 one, one count to Avery Payton. That one's hit high into left field. West going to camp out under it and haul it in for out number two. Two down in the inning. Sidney Williams steps in. No, it's not Sidney Williams. We got a pinch batter. Number nine is not on my roster. I think we're going to have to find it. I believe you had this problem earlier in the week, and it was Monica something. <laughs> to find one of our rosters. Rosters don't always have the... Yep, Monica Davis. Hey, kudos. I remembered something. Monica Davis. She did bat earlier in the series, game one. And she grounded out in that seventh inning in game one. So, Monica Davis is going to bat for Williams, which I find interesting is... Williams has reached base twice already. She singled and scored in the third, drew a walk in the first. Davis way behind that pitch for strike one. Six to one, top of the seventh inning. Whippets trying to get out of this inning and get to the bottom half and uh, put together a comeback. It's a pop-up. Kelly Hood will play it off the grass at second base, and that's it. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll stay right here as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. So we're with you till the end. I can quote Captain America. We're with you till the end of the line. So we're here until this one goes off the air. Bottom of the seventh. Kosciuszko will have eight. Nine and one do up. That's scheduled to be Emma Rush, Alexandra West, and Kelly Hood. Now, you know, Coach Terry might have other plans up his sleeve, maybe thinking about pinch hitting or, or something along those lines. It's the final at bat of the season, so you you know you you, you got to do what you got to do. Pull out all the stops if you can. Payton will come on to pitch it to try to close it out for North Pike. But Coach Tony Terry and the Lady Whippets and the Maroon and White fans here trying to uh, get the crowd into it. You got Lizzie Kate Jones running up and down the dugout, slapping hands with everyone. You got some parents standing up. And uh, the, the folks from Kosciuszko in Italia County that made the long drive, are, they're here in mass to try to will the Lady Whippets on now. That's something that we don't, we should remind you of in game one of the 2018 state championship series. The Kosciuszko Lady Whippets were down eight runs going into the final inning of play. Put together those eight runs that they needed and tied it, sent it into extras, and went on to win that ball game and win the series two games to none. So, you know, nothing is over until it's over. Oh, and that's probably what Coach Terry may be telling his team as we get ready for this final half inning of play 
And it'll be Emma Rush to lead things off. She's reached base twice today. Singled and, our, and drove in a run in the fourth. Reached on an error in the third. She's what could be her final at bat for this Whippet softball team. She's been playing for I don't know how long, and she starts it off with a single through the gap at first base. The same spot she hit her other hit that drove in Gracie Williams. So Whippets lead it off with a single. And Alexandra West steps up. West 0 for 2 today. Did a deep fly ball out in center field that was caught. And then uh, in the third, she reached on an error. Part of that where it was two errors in a row by Wagner at shortstop. Pitch high, ball one. Alexandra West, a sophomore for this Whippet Ball Club. A few more years of playing for Coach Tony Terry or for the Whippet softball team. One-0 -oh pitch, low in the dirt for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Seventh innings are brought to you by Itala County Bank. Pitch trail it by five. There's the pitch to West. That one finds the strike zone for ball one. But you don't blame West for taking there. As the first two offerings from Payton in the at bat were nowhere near the strike zone. So. You got to play the averages there if you're west. And now Payton delivers. Well, that's another called strike. That one on the outside corner. West, if she swings at that, probably going to hit it into the first base dugout. So it was really off the plate. But she's got to guard it up here. She's got a 2 2 count. It's hit past second base. They're going to send Rush to third, and that's where she'll stop. Oh, good piece of hitting there from West, and Whippets have runners on first and third, and nobody out, and Kelly Hood coming to the plate. Hood. Kelly Hood today is one for three, doubled in the fifth. Reached on the fielder's choice in the third. Oh, Kelly Hood. Another senior playing in her final ball game for this Whippet squad. That one's hit to short. Wagner will try to go home. Not in time. So that'll be a fielder's choice. And Rush comes around to score. Still nobody out. West goes to second. And Campbell Blaine will come in. Oh. Whippets trying to put together a comeback here. And they've made up one run. Yeah, with Wagner there throwing it home. Let's see, what grade is Wagner in? Wagner is a sophomore. Oh, you, you, you thought maybe she was a little bit younger of like an eighth or a ninth grader. Uh, maybe some inexperience there, knowing at this point in the game you need outs. You don't need to worry about runs. So that run right there doesn't necessarily mean anything. She could have flipped it underhand to second base and gotten an out, and the run you know, still would have scored, but it wouldn't have uh, meant as much. But anyway, hey, Whippet fans will take it. So Rush comes in, Hood with the RBI. And Coach Wallace brought in her entire defense to speak to them at the midfield. And Campbell Blaine steps up. Blaine's at bats are presented by the SIP in Kosciuszko. Two for three in the ball game. The runners on first and second. Pitch outside corner called strike one. Avery Payton, looks like Coach Wallace is going to stick with her. 
Well, Lady Whippich trying to mount a comeback. High ball one outside. That one ran up a little out of the zone for Payton. Six to two. Hope it's threatening here. That ball's hit foul down towards the sports medicine tent. And a couple of sports medicine trainers, and it looks like some of the Oak Grove ball players and dads had to dive out of the way of that one. One ball, two strikes to count to Campbell Blaine. Here in the bottom of the seventh. Outside ball two. Payton tried to get Blaine to chase one. It's the lefty-lefty matchup. One something that you just don't see a lot of in softball, high school softball especially. Oh, a 2-2 pitch on the way. Off the plate for ball three. Count runs full, and Payton is asking the umpire sort of, you know, where did that miss? And uh, for my money, it didn't miss by much. Ooh, must have been just a little outside. Payoff pitch coming. It's hit through the gap at third base, and everybody's going to hold up. Uh, Wagner got a glove on it to slow it down, and West was well, looking like she was going to round third base. Uh, she stopped and uh, kind of grabbed the bag. As the tying run comes to the plate in the form of Mary Kimball Price. West at third, Hood at second, Blaine at first. Pitch low, ball one. Catherine Clear, Schuler on deck. They are loaded, still no outs in the inning. That one's hit deep in the right field, going back, and it's just foul. Oh, it would have got two runs home. And a collective. Sigh of relief from the blue and white, and the maroon and white give a groan. That hit just to the right of the foul pole. It was not out. It hit the top of the fence, but Price just a little late on the swing there. Everybody in this stadium <laughs> held their breath for about three seconds. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit back up the middle. Hood has to get out of the way of it. And that's going to score one run as West comes around to score. And Hood advances to third, Blaine to second. And Schuler coming to the plate. Schuler represents the go ahead run. There's going to be a meeting on the, in the circle between the players as Coach Wallace comes and talks to the umpire. I don't, I'm not sure what she may be talking about. She's not substituting or anything like that. But Catherine Claire Schuler steps in. And there's nobody out still. Tying run is at first base. Eddie Whippets trying to mount a comeback as... The Whippet fans have cowbells and other kinds of noise makers. They're standing up and they got pictures of the players on styrofoam and everything else on poster board. So it's Schuler who's one for three today. Six to three, Kosciuszko trails it. Swinging strike one. Well. Wow. And if you're Schuler here, it's important to try not to do too much. I mean, you don't have anybody out. You, you don't have to get them all on one swing. It would be great 
be <laughs> great if you caught them all on one swing, but you don't have to. She swings it, strike two. Paid in the head in the count, no balls and two strikes. Opets have gotten two runs here in the bottom of the seventh. They need three more to tie the game. If they get four, they would be the 4A state champs. Oh, two pitch coming. High off the plate for ball th one. That was a good, good call there by the umpire. I think North Pike was hoping it was ball uh, or strike three, but I don't think pa Peyton's not throwing that one to get a strike. She's throwing it to get Schuler to chase it because she's been she swung at the first two. One ball, two strikes. The count. And that one's a called strike three. Not a bad looking pitch there, but that'll be the first out in the inning. Big out if you're North Pike. That is just the second strikeout of the game for Payton. So McKinley Dickerson comes up, bases loaded, only one out. Eighth grader steps in. Today she's 0 for 3. Payton taking her time there. A big at bat. Foul ball off behind home plate. Dickerson has hit the ball twice. She's been robbed of a base hit. She hit it in, in the first or the second inning, deep in the gap at second, and a great play by Greer got her out. And then on a short line drive, Sydney Williams in right field made a sliding, diving catch to rob Dickerson of a base hit. So she's hit the ball well today. Change up there. She's out in front of it for strike two. So Dickerson behind in the count and has to guard it up here. Here's the 0-2 pitch on the way. It's hit. Pass Wagner at short. They're going to, or second, excuse me. And they throw back in, not in time at second. So Whippets push it a little bit closer. RBI single from Dickerson. As West comes around to score, and Gracie Williams will come to the plate. Go ahead, runner, or tying runner is at second base. Um, Coach Tony Terry is going to talk to umpire. I think we may get a, yeah, we're going to get a courtesy runner out at second base for Mary Kimball Price. So, Dickerson. Singles to the right side, first base, or I should say in the gap at second base, and makes it six to four, one out, and Jillian Skidmore, the sophomore, comes on to run at second base. Coach Terry may be getting a little bit more speed out there at second base, hoping that a ball hit through the infield may tie the game. Gracie Williams today, one for three. The ball's hit into the right field, and it's going to get down for a base hit. One run is in. Tying run is at third base. Oh, first pitch swinging. And Gracie Williams drives in a run. Oh, still only one out. That was Kelly Hood that came around to score. Oh, there's going to be another meeting between the players and coaches out at second base. Whippets just throwing it, hitting it through the right side of the infield. Let's see, that will be four hits in the inning. Oh, excuse me, six hits in the inning. And we come to that number seven spot in the lineup. It's either Coleman or Jones. I guess it's probably going to be Coleman since Jones has already been in once for Coleman. I don't think she can come back in. 
So, what? six to five. I had to make the correct note here on the score on the online video or audio video stream. Forgive me if I've forgot it a little bit. There's a lot of things going on here. Six to five, one out, and it will be Macy Coleman stepping in. A junior. Today she's 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. I said Lizzie Kate Jones batted in that seven spot in the fourth inning. Lippitz had the tie run 60 feet away. It's a chopper. They're going to try to go home to get the one, and they get her at home for the out. So that's a fielder's choice. Down to the final out are the Whippets. And it will be Emma Rush who led off the inning with the single and came around to score. After all of this, Emma Rush who started as an eighth grader and everyone's gonna get on their feet here as we're gonna have a fantastic ending to this one. Oh. First pitch hit foul down the first base line. So the Whippets have batted around. Two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. North Pike with a one run lead. Emma Rush at the plate. She started off the inning with the single and got the rally going. Now she's trying to extend the ball game and extend her career. That one's hit foul over the dugout. So down to a final strike are the Kosciuszko Whippets. Been a great ball game here. About as even as a matchup as you could hope for. Well, Whippet fans are hoping to complete a comeback. As you hear the, might hear the rumble of the crowd and the microphones might tell you what happens. We'll turn up the field mic here. And here's the pitch as Jones, excuse me, Rush calls for time as Payton was, was taking her time in the circle. Oh, here's the pitch. High outside ball one. That is McKinley Dickerson at third base. You gotta think any pass ball, they're gonna be sending Dickerson. She's one of the fastest on the team. One ball, two strikes count, here comes the pitch. It's a hit, Wagner's gonna try to play it at third. She's safe, ball gets away, we're tied. We are tied, tie ball game. Wagner threw it to third base, Bates could not hold on to it, and we are tied at six. The rush yeah. extends the game. On an error on the third baseman, I would think it was a slow, slow rolling hit. So it was gonna be tough for any play, but Wagner did get to the ball in time and threw it underhanded to third base and Bates not able to hold on to it. We're tied at six. Gracie Williams, the go ahead run is at third. First pitch swinging by West, strike one. Oh, West singled and scored in the inning already as well. Wind is blowing due out in center field. Hope it's looking to try to extend this one. Swinging strike two. It's a throw down to third. I think a groan from North Pike fans. They're thinking you don't need to do that right there. Because if that ball gets away, you just threw away a state championship because Williams is going to be able to come home. So West facing an 0-2 count. It's a foul ball. Came in inside. So we'll do it all over again. Right. Exciting ball game here as we try to crown a 4A state champion.
Peyton taking her time. Now West is going to take her time. I'm going to tell you, West really takes advantage of that. Whenever that pitcher is you know, struggling there in the, in, in the circle, she'll call for time in the heartbeat. 0-2 pitch coming. Swinging strike three. That'll do it for the whip it cup rally, but hey, we forced extra innings. Whippets get five runs on six hit, one error, and there were two or three runners left on base. We're gonna have free softball here from the campus of Southern Miss. Once again, hey, I said that we'll be with you to the end, and we will be with you till the end. <laughs> So we'll go to the top of the eighth inning after a tie game. I don't want to say anything. Actually, I do want to say that I reminded you before the bottom of the inning. The last time Whippets were here, they did the same thing. They trailed it, and they tied it up and sent it into extra innings. So there we go. Tie ball game. Free softball here from Hattiesburg. Well, the way these two teams have played each other, it's no doubt that they are the two best in the state in 4A. When you, when you have to go to extras to complete the, the series, it is magical. Seven, eight, and nine will come to the plate for the Lady Jags, and in softball, they put the who got the last out will go to second base. So here's interesting. Monica Davis got the last out, but she was batting for Sydney Williams. So who will they send out there? Or do they not do that anymore? There's no one's going out to second base. Mm, still waiting. It's either gotta be it's gotta be that sixth position in the batters in the in the lineup. It's either got to be Williams or Davis. It looks like it's going to be Williams. Yeah. It will be Williams. So Williams will start at second. If you're not familiar with that in, in softball, they, in extra innings, they start a runner at second base. So uh, right off the bat, you can bunt and get someone to third, which I would assume is what we would see coming here. That is what we're going to try to see. And, oh, a diving attempt from Emma Rush almost catches it. It was a pop-up in the air. And Rush gave it her best effort. She bunted it up in the air, and Rush had it in her glove. And when she hit the ground, it, it, it fell out. But a great, great diving effort there from Emma Rush. Oh, maybe see another bunt attempt here. Will. And that one's missed. She, she took a stab at it and it went nowhere. So Price ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. So Rush going to come out and kind of do some traffic directing here. two pitch and she called enough of it to keep the at bat alive it's foul behind home plate eighth inning the first extra inning affair that the Whippets have had this postseason oh two pitch coming hit hard but foul out of play over the third base dugout we're tied at six. Whippets tied in the bottom of the seventh. Five runs across to hit the 6-6 six, six tie. Jolie Spears at the plate for the Lady Jags. She shows butt and she throws and ball gets away from Schuler at first. There'll be runners on the corners with one out. A little like the throw kind of came into the runner at first. So that's what happened there. I'm not sure if they'll charge an error, but it was a bunt that went to Williams. 
And it was going to be a hard play to make. But I think the the batting for North Pike is designated. They do charge it as an Deere. error. But runners will be on the corners with no outs. And Coach Tony Terry wants to come in and speak to the infield. Natalie Deer comes to the plate. Probably just going over procedure right here. What do you do? Do you get outs? Do you get uh, try to get the run home? What do you do? So that's what Coach Terry may be going over some procedural calls. Runners on the corners with nobody out. And the umpire's going to come in and break up the meeting at midfield and we'll walk back to everybody walk back to their positions. Natalie Deer 0 for 3 today. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Deer is the designated player today. She's been playing all over the field. She was third one day, first one day, designated player today. She tries to bunt, and it goes into the whipping dugout in the air. And strike one. Yep. Got the Williams and Schuler playing in, expecting the bunt. And it is Sydney Williams down at third base. That's the go-ahead run. So 0 one count to Deer. Squares the bunt again, lays it down. They'll go to first for one, and the throw home is not in time. Well, they get the out at first, but the run comes home to score. So it'll be a 1-3 put out, and the run comes around. So that will give North Pike the 7-6 lead. The batter is Lady Jack, second baseman, Lane Greer. Lane Greer. At bat, 0 for 2 today with two strikeouts. She didn't bat in the sixth inning. Tristan Toller batted in the sixth inning, and she also struck out. So this is the number nine hitter in the lineup. Ball is hit hard down the left field line, but foul. Oh, oh and one the count to Greer. Laney Greer trying to extend the lead for North Pike. Off speed pitch. Gets away from Rush. Runner will advance to third. That is Spears. So now another potential run just 60 feet away. Now a deep fly ball probably gives you a two-run lead if you're North Pike. Only Whippets use a strikeout right here. It's a pop-up. It's going to get out of play. Foul ball. One ball, two strikes to count. Eighth inning here from the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. These teams liked it so much they wanted to keep playing. Another foul ball. Land on top of the press box. No breeze blowing out to the dead center. Good news for the Whippets. In the bottom half of the inning, they have one, two, and three due up. So they'll get a runner at second base, which will be Alexandra West, you got the top of your order coming to the plate. Just hope they only have to make up one and not two. Here's the one-two pitch. It's hit, and Dickerson will fall under it and catch it at shortstop. She had to back up just a little bit, so that is out number two. Big out there. Emily Williams, the catcher, 
The leadoff batter, top of the order, for the ladies, top of the order back Emily at the Williams. plate. 0 for 4 on the afternoon. She hit a couple of pop fly balls that were out and then grounded out. Last time she was at the plate, she hit a pop up to left field, shallow left field. Oh, Ray Kimball Price trying to close it out here. Whippets trail it by one, seven to six. First pitch offering is out of the zone, outside ball one. Well, Whippet fans showing their support for Price, who came in in relief for Emma Gail Kelly. Low inside ball two. If you're just now tuning in, you might have heard that we went into X ratings. You might have been somewhere and someone told you to find a radio or a, or a cell phone or a, some form of audio stream. We appreciate you for tuning in. It's been an exciting one here as the Whippets force extra innings with five runs in the bottom of the seventh to tie the game. It's, the count goes to 3-0 and oh right now. And it's going to bring a visit on in the infield by Emma Rush and Catherine Claire Schuler. Well, 3 0 count. Infield just kind of giving some uh, encouragement to Price and kind of speaking about what they're going to do here. But two outs in the inning, you know, all, all plays are at first base. Well, 3-0 count, you think Williams doesn't have any inclination to swing right here. 3-0 pitch. That's a called strike one. Well, yeah, so you know Williams was going to be taking that one. Three one the count now to Williams as Price gets ready to throw. It's hit in the center field. Going back is Blaine. Going back and it's gone. Two run home run by Williams. And the, that one got up in the wind. I didn't think it had it. But it went right over the go Southern Miss Golden Eagle logo. And that will extend the lead by two. So nine to six is your score. Right there, and she just turned on that one, did Williams. And that was Williams' first hit since Thursday. Now she did not have a hit in the ball game yesterday, and I guess she was about due. Oh, Kayla Wagner steps in. The batter is shortstop, Kayla Wagner. Shortstop for the Lady Jags, and she homered her last at bat. And that's a high pop-up coming in, or I should say going out to make the catch is McKinley Dickerson, and that will retire the side. But the Lady Jags get three runs on hmm, get three runs on one hit. And there was one error, and nobody left on base. We're staying with it right here. <laughs> I told you we weren't leaving it until this one was over. We're pretty good on all of our spots here. Bottom of the eighth, Kosciuszko will have the top of the order due up. Hood, Blaine, and Price. So, yeah, uh, the Kaylee Wagner with the home run in the top of the seventh inning, or excuse me, in the top of the sixth inning, is what was the difference maker. If she doesn't get that run, then the Whippets are able to get to walk it off there. But that run 
ended up being the, the difference in a tie ball game or a winning ball game. So Whippets will have Kelly Hood, Campbell Blaine, Mary Kimball Price do up. They'll put Alexandra West at second base. What do you do here if you're Coach Tony Terry as you got your, probably your best hitter, one of your two best hitters coming to the plate? You know, you want to bunt to get the runner to third, but you don't necessarily want to sacrifice the out. So this is where, where the coaching really and the experience comes in of a coach that has over 360 wins. But Kelly Hood will lead things off. Whippets have to find a way to get three across in the inning. Nope. There's a round of applause from the North Pike fans. They get loud. And the Whippet fans follow suit. Hood. Reached base three times today. Only credited with one hit, a double in the fifth. Her hits in the seventh and the third innings go down as fielder's choice. She was a part of that big seventh inning the Whippets put together. The first pitch is a breaking ball that comes back across the plate for strike one. The West is at second base. If you're wondering why, maybe just now tuning in, not familiar with the rules of softball in extra innings, the runner goes to second. It was the runner that the batter that got put out last in the previous inning. Hood swings but comes up empty. The ball's in two strikes. We got home run power here at the plate with Kelly Hood. That's one in the postseason already. Whippets will just settle for any kind of hit. Foul ball, third base side. Nine to six. North Pike got three runs in the top half, top half of the frame. Kosciuszko just trying to extend it. They could walk it off if they're able to get four runs. Nope. Uh, Payton steps off the rubber, was behind it, and takes her time. So Kelly Hood will step out and take time herself. Payton lefty has gone the entire game for Coach Sonia Wallace. She threw the entirety of game one, got in one inning of work yesterday. That comes in and hits Hood on the shoulder. Ooh, I can hear that one from up here. Ooh, that one stung. And they'll give her an opportunity to, to, to walk it off and shake it off, but yeah. Ooh. And that sounded more like it hit shoulder bone and not shoulder meat. Anyone who's played ball, forgive me for my crude uh, description there, but <laughs> you know what I mean. The ball hits you in the in the uh, the skin on the muscle, you can shake it off. It's one of those bones. Ugh. Ugh. It's tough, but Whippets will have runners at first and second, and at nobody out, Campbell Blaine coming in. Campbell Blaine, that bat's presented by the Sip. That one's hit up the middle, it will be passed. Shortstop, they're gonna throw and try to get the run at third, but Blaine's able to take second, and West comes in to score. So Blaine with the RBI single ends up at second base. It went right back up the middle and the throw West came around and at third base and was coming all the way. The throw went to third and hit Kelly Hood in the back. Poor Kelly Hood can't get away from the ball. They were trying to get her at third. They, they had conceded the run home. Well, that'll make it nine to seven. And the tying run at second base. Pitch low. Ball one. Campbell playing at second. Kelly Hood at third. Mary Kimball Price at the plate. One for four today with a single is Price. That one's hit deep into right field. Williams camps under it. She'll make the catch. That'll score another run. And now the tying run is at third base. 
That one, yeah, the wind, of course, it died right when we come to the plate. Well, Williams gets under it. Hood comes all the way around to score, nine and to eight. Baseman, and it'll be Catherine Claire Schuler stepping in with a tying run at third base. She represents the winning run. One down in the inning. First pitch called strike one. Schuler today with a double. The only time she reached base, that was in the fourth inning. Right now, they'll settle for a long fly ball if it'll tie the ball game. Swinging strike two. She came inside, and Schuler kind of caught it off the end of the bat. Well, off the handle of the bat, I should say. Schuler, her big hit in the game yesterday really broke open the scoring. And they needed all those runs. She got a grand slam in the top of the seventh. She hits one out here. They win the 4A state championship. Pitch outside in the dirt for ball one. They've gotten two runs across. Nine to eight. Bottom of the eighth. There's the pitch. Hit down the line. Foul at third base. Campbell Blaine has to jump out of the way of that one. Cheerleader instincts and some of those cheers helped her get out of the way. That would have tied the game. It was just to the left of the bag at third. So we'll do it again. Another one ball, two strike count to Schuler. Payton, once again, taking her time. And she'll move into her delivery. High ball, two. Two balls, two strikes to count to Schuler. Now, we do get a little bit of a wind breeze that picks back up. It's kind of blowing out to left field. On the small Southern Miss logo there in uh, center field. High ball three. Count goes full to Schuler. McKinley Dickerson on deck. Campbell Blaine on pins and needles like everyone else here in the stadium, trying to, hoping she gets a chance to step on home plate to tie the game. That hits Schuler in the elbow and She's, that one smarts a little bit, so she'll take first base. And McKinley Dickerson steps in. And you would think they'd want to get, try to get Schuler to second as quickly as possible. And Williams is going to come out from behind plate and kind of give those signals as kind of what they want to do here. Because you think of the runner on third and one out and Schuler at first. They want to get rid of that double play ball as much as possible. So they'll probably send Schuler, and if they throw it, maybe send Blaine home. Chess match here, moves and counter moves. Dickerson hits one through the gap at third, and that will tie the ball game. Oh, just the hit and run, and Dickerson has tied it. Runners on first and second, still only one out. Great piece of hitting there by Dickerson. Just comes up and splits the defense on the left side of the infield. Gracie Williams comes to the plate today. She's two for four. Drove in a run back in that big seventh inning that the Whippets put together. Payton, once again, taking her time behind the rubber. Kind of wiping her palm off on her on her thigh there. Now she'll wind and deliver. That's a chopper foul. Down the third baseline towards the whippet dugout. Williams singled and scored the whippet's first run in the fourth inning. She was driven in by Emma Rush, and she drove in a run in the seventh inning. Nope. 
Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's hit into left center field. They're going to send Schuler home. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. Whippets win the 4A state championship. Whippets win the 4A state championship. Gracie Williams with the bloop single. The senior, Catherine Claire Schuler comes around to score from second base. And the Whippets are coming home with another 4A state championship. They complete the comeback twice in the seventh and in the eighth. The 4A state champs are your Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. Celebration gonna play across the field by Cool and the gang. And the Lady Whippets and the Whippet fans are feeling pretty cool right now as they win it in a walk-off. Uh, we'll step aside for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll wrap it up. But we want to get down on the field for some uh, video and photos and all of that. So we'll step aside for a quick break, come back, recap it, and then we're going to the field to get some audio and celebrate with the team. Your final score, Kosciuszko 10, North Pike 9. Back after this, Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities, a first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through our workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts, CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? You can bank close to home at Holmes County Bank with locations in Lexington, Goodman, Vaden, West, and now Atala County Bank in Kosciuszko. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll County. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Boswell Media Sports. Lady Whippets win it in a walk-off 10-9 over the North Pike uh, Lady Jaguars, and they capture their second state championship, and they use a great comeback to do it. And uh, we're not going to stay here too long. Uh, obviously, we want to get down and get you some content from the field, but we will tell you seventh inning, going to seventh inning, Kosciuszko trailed it by six runs, or by five runs, six to one. They pushed across five runs in the seventh. Top of the eighth, the Lady Jaguars put up three runs. And then in the bottom of the eighth, Whippets put up four runs. It was the Gracie Williams with a bloop single into left center field. Catherine Claire Schuler came around to score from second. That was the winner. So the Lady Whippets are your 4A state champions. Gracie Williams will be our player of the game with the big hit, but we'll also give honorary players of the game to all the four seniors, Emma Rush, Emma Gail Kelly, uh, Kelly Hood, and Ladies Catherine and Claire Schuler. Those are your players of the game. And the Lady Whippets win the state championship on a walk-off. Boy, great, great game. Hats off to North Pike. They got a great squad. It was a shame one of those had to lose the game, but they did. But, see, that's going to do it for us. I'm going to have plenty of content for you online at breezynews.com, so we're not going to worry too much about a post-game wrap-up, but that's going to do it. We want to get out and take all the pictures, and I know moms and, and fans will be sending me pictures and stuff, so we'll, we're good. But we want to go down and talk to the team. But we want to say a thank you 
Back at the studio, to Evan and Donald, both uh, were keeping us on the air this weekend. Both of them doing a great job. Also, thank you to Melissa back, you know, at, at the headquarters, the boss uh, with the sales team, her and uh, Laura, who helped us in the uh, lead up and producing the broadcast. And we, just everyone involved in Boswell Media Sports, thank you to the Whippet coaching staff, the administrators who are, you know, allow us access to the team and uh, really are able to uh, we're able to get a lot of content and we appreciate all that they uh, that they do for us also a big thank you to all of our sponsors it will be angel Albany mcdonald state farm holmes community college farm bureau the ship kosciusko auto parts italic county co-op premier medical group serve pro michelle nicholson state farm central tire service italic county bank the citizens bank frank chevrolet central electric power association wendy's and ivy mechanical thank you all of our sponsors here in the postseason for that. But that will wrap us up for Whippets softball with the state championship. Their Whippets second in four years. So congratulations to head coach Tony Terry and the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. Well, we are going to break down, go down here and take all the pictures we can. But watch breezynews.com for an announcement on when the team will be coming back home. I know they'll probably have a big send off a big collective you know someone coming in with the sirens and all of that back to the field house so watch breezynews.com breezy 101 facebook page will tell you when that will happen and we'll be there to get pictures and audio and, and video and all of that so we're gonna we're gonna do that but right now we're gonna go on down and celebrate with the team your final Kosciuszko 10 north pike nine Thanks for listening to Whippet Softball. This is Breck Riley signing off for 2021 saying good afternoon and go Whippets. <laughs>